haven't been here in a year, but it's one of my favorite places to be. We're in the Baja, California. We're about to try to hunt a Crimnobodies, which is my fourth subspecies of desert sheep. We were here a year ago hunting the Weemsy. Uh, most of the people uh, that hunt desert sheep are hunting what we call a Mexicana, either in the Sonora area down in Mexico or Arizona, New Mexico, and uh, the, the other subspecies of Nelsonia in Western Texas. So this would be the fourth, this would be the grand slam of desert sheep for me, which is very special. And I started 12 years ago chasing sheep uh, at the advice of a buddy of mine and uh, never stopped. So this is gonna be my 30th sheep. I've been trying to get my 30th Ovis for 12 years now. So this is it. I've got 34 Capra, so this will mark my 30-30, which is the biggest goal I've been working for in my hunting career. Once we got uh, checked in and got into Loretto and met up with our team, it was a little bit different plan than last year. I was hunting the Weemsy uh, the year before, and uh, heck, we had an annual cockfight in Loretto, and that's a special deal when they're fighting roosters down there. So, uh, but that wasn't one on the agenda this time. We still had that four-hour drive north, though, and it's kind of a, a challenge if you're uh, if you get any kind of motion sickness at all. But the coolest thing about it is the view on the right and left when you're at the sea. I mean, it's right there on the, on the coast and you've got some beautiful, beautiful uh, sights to see as you drive up there. And we made it to the camp out in the middle of nowhere and we're treated with uh, you know friendly hospitality and great shrimp tacos and, uh, and just went to bed. Got a back issue now. Uh, we're getting older. This country is steep and rough. And if you've got 10 miles to go, man, all the help you can get sometimes is needed. And this particular uh, spike camp we were going to is about 10 miles and we had horses and we had a pack of mules and we had wranglers and we had a bunch of help. So, and it, it took every bit of it. Made for a long day, but really cool to see that country back there. I mean, you'll never see country like this unless you're uh, you're hunting in the mountains, and that's one of the special treats that these adventures bring, uh, at least for me. And then just the culture of the people, you know, seeing how they uh, interact and how they work with one another. Uh, this team's phenomenal. That uh, Francisco Eduardo uh, are really the leaders and the owner of this company, but they've got they've got phenomenal team members too. We had a good dinner and got some much needed sleep and got a plan for the next day because we had a haul the next day too just to get to where we thought these sheep were, uh, were going to be. Good morning. Today's the day. Uh, we got in here uh, last night, set up camp and got comfortable and we've got some sheep uh, spotted a couple of miles here behind this uh, ridge behind us. So the plan uh, is to get on these sheep and uh, size up which one we're gonna hunt. And uh, instead of going out the whole day, the way we came in, we're gonna hike about five miles out to the bay and catch a boat. So these guys have been in here looking at these sheep. They found a band of rams. There's about a dozen of them. They've split up yesterday, one group high, one low. So we're gonna see what they're doing this morning. We'll get over there pretty quickly and uh, and the hunt will be on. This is the fun part. We've already got a, a ram that we're trying to size up. Hadn't been out too long, but we've seen a couple of rams at a distance. And we're almost to this big canyon that we're going to be hunting in where we've seen this band of rams, 12 rams. So it's not too far. As I said earlier, some of them have stayed high, some of them have come low. So this could be part of that group. So we definitely want to check it out. 
as we on our way into that canyon. And so it's real hard to see in the sun. We're looking right into the sun. And it's always a challenge. But uh, we'll get eyes on it here and see what's going on. Thirtieth seat, man. Thirtieth Ovis. Three. Oh. Thirtieth Ovis. Thirty thirty, man. 30, 30. I've been playing for this for twelve freaking years, dude. Thirty-four goats and thirty sheep in twelve years, man. It's pretty awesome. I'm a happy man. We have it down, man. I mean, I have so many kill shots through a phone scope and iPhone through a spotting scope. So Francisco's done that with me a few times. He was capturing that. Had another guy with his iPhone capturing me uh, actually on the gun, and so we thought we had had this deal made made in the shade. And uh, you know, I'm up there at the point of shooting the animal. We had gotten to that point, and uh, I look back at Francisco after I shot the animal. I was like, "Hey, did you get all that?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, man." And uh, I was like, "Great." And then he looked down, and I could tell that something was wrong. <laughs> and he was like. I go, what's up, man? He's like, my battery was dead on my iPhone. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So, hey, <clears throat> that's reality. That's what happens on these hunts, you know? But I like showcasing that because it's the real thing. With Harlan hunts, you're getting the real deal. And on this hunt, you're gonna see, we missed the kill shot. Should never miss a sunrise here in the Mexican desert. It's always a sight to see. And uh, the hunting is a bonus. We're gonna get after a Baja blacktail this morning. Uh, this ranch has got a pretty good population. They were hunting here last week and the rut is in full effect, uh, the guides are telling us. So we've, uh, we've got a good day ahead of us. We're gonna see a lot of action and try to get us a really good mature blacktail. I was here last year hunting a Weemsy and uh, I shot a blacktail, but he had his main bean broken off and a lot of points broken off. That's because it was in late February and <clears throat> it's just middle of January. You know, those bucks were just fighting hard and we're all broken up. But that's why after this criminal bodies, I wanted to come down here and test my luck and try to get a good mature rack on a Baja Blacktail.
so we'll see uh, see what happens here. Everybody out in different directions, and uh, a couple of the guys <clears throat> bought a, a really nice 4x4. Uh, Nick says it's the biggest one he's ever seen out here. <clears throat> we tried to get over there and couldn't make it, so we all came back regrouped. <clears throat> Ran into it, separated from his doe's tongue hanging. He was tired. Went into a little draw, so we think he's still gonna be there. So, we're about to find out. We had a real good idea what these mule deer were doing. Uh, we thought they were in the rut, but come to find out it was more pre-rut. The guides had been hunting this ranch the week before and uh, they killed a really nice buck and had seen some other good ones and uh, four by fours too. So it's kind of rare to find a four by four black tail, but uh, that's what we were hunting after. And uh, it, uh, it, it became a challenging hunt that day. You know, we went to a couple different spots and. It just didn't pan out for us. So uh, the growth in the area was just, I mean, it's like, I've never seen this much growth in Mexico before. The rainfall that past year uh, was, must've been record rainfall, but that made it hard to glass, uh, gave the animals the advantage because they could hide easier. And then once you saw one, it just slip away uh, behind a Palo Verde or behind a cactus. And it was all she wrote there. If you've been following Harlan Hunch, you know, I've been on this, quest to get as many sheep and goats and the mountains across the, the world and the big dream I've had for the last 12 years was was the 3030 and this trip was super special to me because it not only was the desert sheep grand slam for me but it was also my 30th Ovis and I'd been working very hard for the 3030 30 Ovis and 30 Capra so that really uh, made it for a you know, close a good chapter for me, a great chapter. I'd like to say 12 years and a lot of hard work, a lot of planning, a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of sacrifices. And could never have done it with, uh, with you know, with all the help from, uh, from everybody along the way. I mean, there's a lot of people that have helped me. So thanks to all the people that have helped me uh, make this goal come true. If you dream and dream big and explore and find a purpose like I did for this type of hunting, then you can do it too. So I always say, dream big, explore a lot, and if you're gonna hunt, hunt with a purpose.